Hello and welcome to Learn ADS in 5 Minutes. This is tutorial 50 on optimization using vendor library components. In this tutorial, we will learn about how to perform optimization while using vendor SMT components, such as components from Murata. Now, these kind of components usually have a list available for you to pick a value uh, from the list available to do your circuit design. Now, this makes our optimization job a little challenging because there is no straightforward way of performing optimization. But not to worry, we have this tutorial and you will find it very, very easy to perform optimization even if you are dealing with vendor components. Now, before we start, subscribe to my channel. Once you subscribe, don't forget to click on the bell icon to enable all the notifications. And after you watch the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues who may be interested in watching similar tutorial. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about how can we do this kind of optimization. Now, remember in some of the earlier tutorial videos, we did talk about how to perform optimization. And there I was using a regular LNC kind of components or transmission line kind of components. But in this case, because we have to deal with vendor library components, we will stick our discussion to SMT components such as inductor and capacitor. Now for a regular optimization, you can set the goal, you can set optimization controller, and then by going to simulation variable setup, you could go to optimization tab. All the components will be available for you to pick. And now you can go ahead and set and run optimization as you need. So those things we already talked about. Now in this tutorial, let's see how can we do the same level of optimization if we have a vendor component. So in this test bench, I do have a low pass filtered circuit using Murata components. Now you can see I have a Murata library already installed and I use those components to design my circuit. Now in this kind of component series, usually you place a component from the library to schematic, and then from the list available, you can pick any value which you want your circuit design. Now, for example, I will pick 5.1 nano Henry here, and now let's go ahead and perform a regular simulation just to see how bad our filter response is. And here you can see it's really bad. It doesn't look like a filter. Now, if you have to do optimization, we can set the goal as we need along with the optimization controller. However, like earlier case with the ideal components, if we go to simulation variable setup and look under optimization, we can't see any component values because these components are vendor library components. So they are not treated as um, you know, our regular inductor capacitors. To optimize the values of these vendor library components in the list available, either at the top, uh, which you can see here, declare as null, or at the bottom, you will always find this option here called discrete optimized setting. If you want to perform optimization, you can click on that option. And now you have a nominal value, which is what you were using earlier. And then you have minimum value and maximum value. And by default, it will go to index one and the last index, giving you the whole range available. But you can set your start point and the stop point in terms of value wherever you want to perform optimization. For this present case, I will go from the beginning to the end so that we have the complete list of values available for circuit optimization. Like I did for this one component, similarly I have for this setup for this capacitor and rest of the inductors here. Now I do have you know, five inductors and four capacitors, total nine components, and rest of the process is pretty same. One change, however, whenever you are using vendor library components for optimization, you do not have access to all optimizers here. You could use typically random, discrete and simulated annealing. So these are the typical options which you pick. I personally prefer to use random whenever I deal with these kind of components, but it's up to you. And once we hit optimize, now you can see ADS optimizer is changing the component values by changing the different different you know, series of components or value of components. And accordingly, you can see your optimization results getting updated. Another nice thing you can do with these kind of components, I can pause this optimization anytime, enable the tuning option. Now with this tuning option enabled, 
basically I can also change any vendor component. For example, if I pick uh, this C3 and this part number, once I move the slider, the part number of that component will change and accordingly the response will change. So you can even perform live real-time tuning uh, yourself using the vendor library components. Whenever you think you missed it enough, you can go ahead and continue the optimization and let ADS take over performing the optimization. So in few seconds, we will have optimization completed with both of our goals met. Now, sometime also one more tip when you deal with this kind of optimization, you might feel the optimization is running quite slow. And part of the reason is because the default way this controller is set under parameters, this option is always checked update display during optimization. So what's happening behind the scene at every optimization iteration, the optimizer is coming to data display and updating uh, these plots. And that can slow down your optimization process. If you want your optimization to run faster, you can uncheck this block so that now optimizer don't need to come and update the trace every time. And in that way, the optimization runs faster. Now, once you are satisfied or the goals are met, you can stop the optimization, close, update your design, and all the values here inside this networks are updated. Now, if you go here and check the value, the, we started with nominal value of 5.1 nano Henry, but now it's 56 nano Henry. And that tells you the circuit, the value has been up you know, already optimized and updated. Now, another thing which I did in this is schematic. Usually when you set up these components for optimization, and if you have this parameter displayed on a schematic, something like this, you might see a big text available, you know, appearing on your schematic, which kind of creates a lot of clutter. So when, when I deal with these kind of optimization, I usually switch it off so that your schematic looks pretty clean. And now we have the optimized circuit. We can run normal simulation and look at the optimized filter response. And that's how simple it is to optimize vendor library components. Thanks for watching this tutorial. I hope you find the content presented to be useful for your design work and stay tuned for more videos. Thanks a lot.